have you ever felt on the outside, on the edge, left out? Perhaps because you're poor or not as well off as those around you. Or maybe because of your physical or mental health. Or because of the color of your skin or where you come from. Perhaps because of your sexuality or your gender. Or because you wear the wrong clothes or you speak with the wrong accent or you live in the wrong area of town. Perhaps because you believe what many people don't. Perhaps just because you feel different. Perhaps because you feel no one understands. Maybe you just feel you don't belong. Well, if you have any of those feelings, today's gospel is for you. Because Jesus shows us that no one should be on the outside. And maybe there's something you can do to respond to Jesus. And if you don't feel on the outside, then today's gospel is also for you. Because Jesus shows us that no one should be on the outside. And so maybe there's something you can do to respond to Jesus. First, let's look at today's first reading. So the situation there is the people of Israel, about 1,500 years before Jesus, a society facing a highly infectious disease, one that could spread really quickly among the whole population, so that when disease was discovered among anyone, the person infected had to go into isolation to keep away from others in case they pass the disease on. I think we know a situation like that ourselves. You see, we are all lepers today. We have to isolate from each other and we're diseased. We're not at ease. Even if we don't have a physical illness, we may be enduring anxiety or stress or maybe just a sense of flatness. And perhaps we're not sure how to make things better. Now there's also a leper, as you noticed, in today's gospel. And I'd like you to just think of four things in that story, which I'd like to highlight to you. First, the leper approaches Jesus, but he shouldn't have. The first reading made it quite clear. The leper must live apart, stay away from everyone else, be in isolation. But the leper in the gospel is desperate. He's pleading on his knees to Jesus. And Jesus doesn't turn away. Jesus doesn't maintain social distancing, I'm afraid. He stretches out his hand and touches the leper, when he shouldn't have, because he goes beyond the conventions and the boundaries that were set, and he does it immediately. We see that word twice in the gospel, once it's translated as immediately, and the other as at once. It's the same Greek word underneath. Jesus didn't ask questions. He didn't judge. He didn't look down on the leper. He just healed him. And notice that Mark doesn't just say that Jesus touched the leper. He says that Jesus stretched out his hand. That image of stretching out your hand or the outstretched arm, you may recall yourself, it actually occurs over 200 times in the Old Testament. So when Mark's original hearers and readers were hearing that, they knew what was happening it was the action of God. Jesus stretched out his hand with mighty power to save. And he doesn't just heal the leper physically. He sends him back in the, into the community to be reintegrated. That's why he sends him to the priest. So that having been to the priest, he can rejoin the community. 
he can no longer be isolated. But the irony is, of course, that as a result of healing the leper, Jesus ends up on the outside. He said he had to stay outside in places where nobody lived. He's actually become ritually impure by touching the leper. But Jesus was willing to do that for the leper's sake. And he's willing to do it for us too. If only we will come and kneel before him. He will stretch out his hand to save us. So what can we do to feel that healing touch of Jesus? Well, I think there's two things we need to do. The first is like the leper to bring ourselves to Jesus. Are we keeping Jesus on the edge in isolation as he was in today's gospel? Do we actually believe that Jesus wants to heal us? Remember what the leper said, if you want to, you can heal me. So do we have that same prayer? And in Lent, which is coming up just next week, we have a chance, as Father Mark's been asking us, to get connected, particularly to get connected back to Jesus. A chance to know Jesus better. One way of doing that will be um, joining me in the sessions that we're going to have on this wonderful Gospel of Mark, which tells us all about who Jesus is. And details of how you can sign up will be in the newsletter. But like the leper, we can all kneel before Jesus. The blessed sacrament, the presence of Jesus, is exposed here every day in the church. So whether you can come to the church or whether you have to still stay away, you can be with Jesus and kneel before him and join us over live stream. And if you can come to church, there's an opportunity to meet Jesus and kneel before him in the sacrament of reconciliation. And if we're able to take advantage of that, then we can experience what the psalmist experienced, that joy of being healed, happy the one whose offense is forgiven. The other thing we can do, as well as bringing ourselves to Jesus, is to bring others to Jesus. We can bring someone else in from the outside. We can follow the example of the Apostle Paul in the second reading, where he says he wants to help people come to Jesus, and he uses as his example Jesus himself, so that we can help others be saved, just as the Apostle says. Who do you know? Who can you see in today's society who's on the outside? The lonely, the vulnerable, the economically disadvantaged, people of different race, of different color, nationality, or maybe just closer to home, a conflict with someone that we haven't resolved. Is this the chance for you to stretch out your hand and offer healing? In our first hymn, which sadly we didn't hear all of because of our technical problems, but you can see it on the word sheets. It says, let us build a house where hands will reach beyond this wood and stone to heal and strengthen. So like Jesus, let's stretch out our hand. Let people know they're not on the outside. How? Just a phone call or an email or just smile at someone if you pass them. We may need to go to the peripheries, or we may just need to go to the peripheries, as Pope Francis says, of our own attitudes, of our assumptions, of our conventions, of other constraints that are stopping us or making excuses. How do we feel, for example, about the prisoner, the drug addict, the alcoholic, the asylum seeker? Do we just think that's a matter for the law as it was for people in, who didn't help the leper in the gospel. And if we can't do something immediately about that, can we at least bring them to Jesus in prayer? And another way of bringing people to the feet of Jesus is using Alpha. It's a great opportunity for us to invite someone to come and hear about Jesus. And maybe we can accompany them ourselves. So let's just finish just with a short period. If you just at home, if you just
close your eyes for a second and just be at peace and put yourself in that gospel scene. You're there. You've come before Jesus. You're kneeling at his feet. He looks on you with love and compassion and he stretches out his hand to you to heal you. How are you going to respond to that offer of Jesus? Because whether you're young or old or male or female or black or white, Jesus is stretching out his hand to you. Whether you're rich or poor or somewhere in between, married, single, divorced, widowed, employed or unemployed, Jesus is stretching out his hand to you. Whether you've lived here all your life or whether you've come from a completely different country, whether you're abled or disabled, straight or gay, Jesus is stretching out his hand to you. Whether you're full of faith or just hanging on, whether you're a saint or a sinner, whether you're here in the church or joining us at home, Jesus is stretching out his hand to you. He's stretching out his hand right now and he's saying to you, of course I want to. Be healed. <laughs>